A bit of an apology for me going into this one. Unfortunately, I messed up the recording of qualifying, so there is no qualifying footage of round three of the season. I was actually able to stick it on pole, which, you know, I was really, really surprised by, but unfortunately, yeah, but basically just going to have to jump straight into the action for this one as well. For you guys that didn't actually watch the preseason video, I sort of explained that there's no working Baku mod for me personally yet. So unfortunately, this is effectively the European Grand Prix being held at Imola. But yeah, hopefully, you know, you guys still enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, obviously, if you're new as well. But yeah, let's move on then into round three of the FIA Formula 2 season. Obviously, if you want to go check out the two videos that went out last time out, I would highly, highly recommend going back and doing so. But as I said, let's move on then into round three of the year here at Imola. So here we are then jumping straight into the action at the European Grand Prix. It is six red lights. It's a very long hole, but it is finally lights out and away we go. And it has not been a good start for myself, but it has been for Lorandi. He is going to absolutely take off on the run towards Turn 1 here. Alexander Albon is going to be able to look to the outside of myself, but that has not been the start I wanted here. As we break in towards Turn 1, though, Albon much more committed on those tyres. There is a little bit of word about the cold tyres off the start there. And that means we've dropped from the lead all the way down at 2p3 off the start of this race here. But hopefully we can try and stick with Alexander Albon over these next few corners here, potentially try and line up a bit of a move back past there. But yeah, mainly the aim from me in this one is just to try and find a bit more consistency. Obviously, after Bahrain, we made a few mistakes here and there. The pace, one that pace, obviously, was very, very good. But race pace, we really sort of struggled with just that little bit more there. And unfortunately, obviously, with Imola, where we were able to bag the pole, obviously, I'll take the bonus points. They're really, really useful here, but, it, you know, it doesn't mean everything. We try to have a look down the inside of Alexander Albon there, but just cannot make anything work just yet in this race there. And he will hold on 2p2 off the opening couple of laps there. On to lap three, though, and we were still trying to pile on the pressure here. You can see that Randy is just trying to use this opportunity. If I'm not mistaken, before going into this one, he didn't score... Sorry, no, he scored one point after Bahrain there, so clearly obviously wants to show a bit more potential, show what he's really worth, obviously that's basically what everyone is trying to do in Formula 2, show their worth here, but Albon once again runs a little bit wide there, as we come down in towards the double right hander here, we once again think about sniffing up the inside, but once again we just don't have enough of the car up the inside to really try and warrant any sort of overtake here, but still you know we are just piling on that pressure, he is starting to make a couple of little mistakes here and there, so he's clearly getting a little bit worried by it myself, but through the chicane though, we've taken far too much curve, what a costly error that has been for myself, that was not what we needed in this race, and that's going to send us back down the field there, unfortunately we do to get like, just ahead of uh, George Russell here, but he might be able to have a look around the outside, in towards the final couple of corners here, just look at the drive from the ART driver there, and with the grass on the tyres, I'm not going to try and keep it up the inside there, we will just let him back through, and hopefully we can try and get back into a rhythm here, and once again, Try to mount a challenge to the rest of the field here. But yeah, still struggling to try and get to grips with Assetto Corsa so far. And it is making the racing a little less predictable as well, which is obviously something that a lot of people like to see from Formula 2. I think we've got um, Bolshung and Giotto side by side as they come in towards Come on here. There's a little bit of a glitch uh, with the game using, using the mode that I'm using for custom grids. Unfortunately, it means that one driver basically takes a break each week, but I did work out that uh, Dennis Sorodu, or whatever his name is, is actually Ralph Bolshan moving on into this race, and obviously he was leading the championship after a very, very dominant display in the opening two rounds at Bahrain, but obviously not looking like that he could carry that pace over to Imola there, but just look at that, George Russell makes a big mistake as we come in towards the double right-hander there, but runs into the back of me. What on earth is the ART driver doing there? I personally felt you know, I, I certainly had enough of the car alongside to warrant the room there, but he just ran straight into the back of me. Not too sure if he pinched a brake or what went on there, but George Russell just completely creamed into the back of me there. I think he came up a lot worse off it than I did there, and I think that is George out of the first round here at the European Grand Prix there. So very, very unfortunate for him, but, you know, personally, I thought that was completely his fault there. But over these next couple of laps, we would slowly but surely close back up the gap to this front group here from about sort of third down to P60, you know, he had Aitken, uh, Mione, Markalov as well, all in this little battle here, and we were slowly but surely closing back up to this group, just showing that, our, you know, our one lap pace was very, very strong here, but we were just trying to find more and more consistency 
in this car. Still trying to, you know, get to grips with it just fully here. And obviously that is one thing that you've really got to do in a Formula 2. You've got to be able to jump from machinery very, very quickly here. You've got to adapt, improvise and overcome, I think it's what the Nietzsche guy says on TV. But yeah, we're still all over the back though of Mayoni here as we come in towards the second check in here. We're just not able to get close enough really to line up a bit of a move just yet here in towards the next couple of corners though. Are we going to be able to try and force him into a bit of an error? We're going to try and get good traction on the exit of the hairpin up the hill here. Really, really difficult to try and get the power down there. Almost like Montreal of the first couple of corners there. But in towards the next corner there, Mayini does go defensive. Are we going to be able to get a slingshot move like we did to George Russell there? Right around the outside. It turns to the inside for the next corner. We're very, very aggressive in our defending there. Don't want to see the same story like we did with George where he seems to think He's got an opportunity to get back around the outside there. And we do now move back up into P6 of this race. So not too bad so far. You know, we're on a bit of a recovery drive once more here. And we are now all over the back, though, of Jack Aitken. So really just go show, you know, when the AI do sort of group up, we can still calm our way back up through the order as we come now down in towards the final double left-hander of the lap. Are we going to be able to get good traction on the way out? The AI tend to be very, very good on the traction zones here. A bit better than I'd say than on F1 overall, obviously, but yeah, obviously, we'll just have to wait and see about what we can try and do to try and get past Jack Aiken in the other ART car, obviously. They're probably big championship rivals in both the drivers and constructors here, obviously, after George Russell has proven in the real-life 2018 season just how dominant he can be in a Formula 2 car. It's going to be exciting to see what he's going to be able to do in the Williams next year, but less said about that, more said about this potential move up the inside of Aiken there. We got the wheel just up the inside, but unfortunately... Didn't have enough of the car alongside to really warrant any track space there. I don't know what the AI can be like. That Just that incident with George Russell was really sticking in the back of my mind throughout the entirety of this race. We didn't really want to take as many risks as we usually would here. But once again, though, Aiken is going to turn in a little bit too early there. Tried to play defensive. Run himself a bit wide on the exit of the corner here. Are we going to be able to make the move work? They're going to be side by side, down in towards the next corner. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact there. That's been a half spin for myself and that is just so so frustrating the ART drivers not afraid to play very very aggressive there and that's going to once again drop me back behind my Amy here so that has not been what I wanted once more there and well as I said the ART drivers of Aitken and Russell clearly wanted to put everything on the line here and that is not what I need in this race but going on now to the final lap though of this race we've still got a potential move so try and get back past me Amy here for the extra two points in this race, if I'm not mistaken as well, we have got the fastest lap of the race, so you know, that would be two bonus points in the bag, but I would obviously like to make it four, obviously, if we can get back past Mani here on this final lap of the race. Aiken is just too far up the road now after that bit of an incident now. I think Mani was, you know, he was able to keep up with these guys when he was, but I don't think he was really able to make any sort of threat to them as well here, but all over the back though still of Arjun Mani here on this final lap. We're going to try and get good drive out of the head, and they're a little bit close that lose at the back end but still we're able to get very very close to the rear of me in towards this left hander once more he does turn in once again a little bit early commits defensive line we're going to be able to look right to the outside it will move to the inside once more there but Mayani what a move around the outside there fantastic defending from the Indian driver there absolutely was not expecting that you never see that on the Formula 1 games there a round of applause but Arjun Mayani there, that was absolutely incredible defensive work that I really was not expecting him to try and keep it right around the outside. He found the grip, found the traction, able to get the car on the brakes as well there and made it work. We're going to try to, to send it down the inside in towards the final corner there. It all gets a little bit out of hand, a little bit of an aggressive Sebastian Vettel-esque move there, if I do say so myself. But yeah, what a defensive move. From Mayani though, I can't get over that one. I was able to swing it right back around the outside. I'm pretty certain he had the rear wheel ever so slightly on the grass there as well. And honestly, he deserves to hold on to that sixth place. What a finish to the racer. Unfortunately for myself, it's only going to be but well, it's only going to be P7 for Lando Norris. There's six points in the bag. Obviously, the four from qualifying as well as the bonus two from the race will still give us a fairly healthy points all from that race there. But yeah, I just cannot get over Mayani's defensive move. Right at the very death there. But yeah, what a race that was overall. A bit of a weird one, you know, not as much action. It, a lot of it was just spent trying to force the AI into errors there. But I think overall it still was a very, very exciting race there. But Lorandi is able to win in front of his Italian home crowd there. A lot of the Italians actually doing a very, very good job in this race there. So Lorandi takes home the race victory there. Alexander Albon, actually one of the key drivers there, who's very, very strong from the opening three races 
of this season. There, Fuoco as well. Another Italian. Two Italians on the podium there. Considering obviously we don't have any in Formula 1 at the moment. Obviously they're just showing their potential ready to move up into Formula 1 for 2019. Markelov comes through for P4. Jack Aitken in 5th. Maini in 6th there. Orlando Norris myself obviously in P7. Giotto in P8 there with I think it was Max Gunther in P... Sorry, uh, Louis Delatraz in ninth with Gunther down in P10. There were Fukuzima, Nassani, Latifi, Seta Camera, Ralph Bolshung, Dorian Boccalacci, uh, Makino, Nick de Vries, George, uh, George Russell and Sean Galeel there all rounding out the race obviously with the bottom four there. Quite a race of attrition there, four drivers out at the end of the day. But that leaves Alexander Albon now in the lead of the World Championship here. 33 points ahead of Ralph Bolshung's 32. But just look at the consistency we've been able to show so far. They're all the way up in P3 on 28 points. Obviously, we're just able to score all those bonus points and everything like that. Consistency will definitely be key there. We're just two points there ahead of Lorandi after a fantastic day out for him. Nassini drops down to fifth there with Nick De Vries on 21. Gunther, uh, Louis Delatraz, George Russell and Markolov all tied on 18. Now, Fuoco, Jack Aitken, Arjumani, Luca Giotto and Nicholas Latifi rounding out the point scorers in the Drivers' World Championship. And you think that is close, take a look at the Constructors' standings after those opening three races. Trident and Dams tied at the top on 34 there. Sharu on 33. MP Motorsport on 32. Four teams separated by two points. And just a further four points back. Carlin, ART, Campos all tied on 28 as well. There were Premier on 21, Russian Time and Arden on 18 there. So everyone very, very close after the opening three races of the season. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure you do like and subscribe if you're new around here as well. And you do want to see more of the FIA Formula 2 Lando's Road to F1. But that has been it for the feature race here at Imola. And hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow for the sprint race as well.